Hydrothermal vents, from deep sea black smokers to landbound geysers, may have been sites where prebiotically important molecules on early earth were formed. This animation shows the formation of fatty acids deep in the earth below a geyser. Mineral surfaces can catalyze the stepwise formation of hydrocarbon chains from carbon monoxide and hydrogen. Here hydrogen atoms are shown as white spheres. Carbon is gray and oxygen in red. The reaction results in the growth of hydrocarbon chains of various lengths that are eventually released from the mineral face as fatty acids and related compounds. Because the fatty acids are at low concentrations in the water, they are unable to form higher order structures such as micelles and membranes. Following the violent explosion of the geyser, some water is released into the atmosphere as tiny, microscopic droplets. Fatty acids synthesized along the mineral walls of the geyser are found in low concentration in these droplets, with the longer fatty acids at the air-water interface. A gust of wind evaporates the water molecules in the water droplet, causing the fatty acid to form lightweight airborne particulates that can be transported across the landscape, perhaps eventually settling out and accumulating in localized areas. Under the proper conditions of concentration and pH, fatty acid micelles may join together to form a vesicle. Individual micelles first join to create a large, sheet-like bilayer. Random fluctuations of the fatty acid bilayer lead to the formation of a cup-like shape. When in close proximity, the ends of the sheet can seal together forming a spherical vessel. When fatty acid micelles are added to a solution containing preformed vesicles, the vesicles are observed to grow rapidly. This is thought to happen through the formation of a micelle shell around the vesicle. Individual fatty acid molecules are then transferred from the micelle to the outer leaflet of the vesicle, resulting in vesicle growth and micelle shrinkage. Fatty acids must flip-flop between the inner and outer leaflet of the vesicle to ensure even growth of the vesicle membrane. Vesicles formed from fatty acids are extremely stable and are able to maintain the same shape and size over the course of days or even months. Individual fatty acids within the vesicle, however, are very dynamic. Fatty acid molecules are constantly entering and leaving the vesicle membrane and flipping between the inner and outer leaflets. In this animation, the flipping fatty acids are highlighted in white. Recent research has shown that single nucleotides of RNA are able to traverse fatty acid vesicle membranes. This animation shows one mechanism by which nucleotides may enter the vesicle. Nucleotides bump into and interact with fatty acid head groups, colored in red, in the outer leaflet. Some of the fatty acids interacting with the nucleotide flip to the inner leaflet, carrying the nucleotide along and releasing it on the inside of the vesicle. Researchers have shown that clays, such as Mont Merlinite, are able to catalyze the formation of polymers and RNA from single nucleotides. Nucleotides, shown in white and blue, adsorb to the surface of a small clay particle, shown in brown. As the surface becomes more crowded, nucleotides that are close together can undergo a chemical reaction resulting in the formation of a polymer, or strand, of RNA. The following animation is meant as an analogy to explain the need for compartmentalization in the RNA world. Here, the RNA replicase is represented by a blue cube. If the replicase encounters another replicase, it can make a copy, resulting in two identical replicases.
Our replicase, however, is not so picky. If it encounters an RNA that isn't a replicase, it will copy that too. In an environment where there are many different RNAs, the replicase will quickly become outnumbered. What's the solution? By placing the replicases in a compartment, such as a vesicle, the replicases are separated from the other RNAs and will only make copies of each other. This animation shows a mechanism by which RNA is replicated in a non-enzymatic manner. Single nucleotides find their complementary base on the template strand and undergo a chemical reaction to form a polymer. This reaction is possible because the nucleotides have been chemically activated so as to increase their reactivity. This animation shows the process of RNA replication being carried out by a theoretical RNA replicase ribosome. The replicase attaches to the end of the template strand. As the replicase moves along the template, it catalyzes the polymerization of a complementary strand. At a sufficiently high temperature, the individual strands of an RNA duplex will separate from each other. Upon cooling, the single-stranded RNAs may then undergo RNA folding. For each duplex, only one strand will form a functional ribozyme replicase. This newly formed replicase can use its complementary strand as a template to create yet more replicases. This animation shows the process of protocell growth and division. RNA nucleotides shown as blue dots traverse the protocell membrane and are used by an RNA replicase to make a copy of another RNA replicase. Meanwhile, the protocell membrane is constantly growing through the addition of micelles. Increasing the surface area faster than the volume causes the protocell shape to become elongated and unstable. The protocell eventually splits into daughter protocells with the contents of the original protocell randomly divided between the daughters.